Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Knights of Glory. Knights of Glory is for ages 8 and up, 2 to 5 players, and takes about 15 to 45 minutes to play. In the game, it's basically the king has decided that he is going to basically cause this tournament to go on, where the best and bravest of the knights are going to enter into the dungeons below his keep, and they have to get through this rigorous psychological and physically enduring uh, test of fate, where you're going to start at a... Um, point and then try to end by fighting this dragon and whatever knights can accomplish this is going to be the winner. This game is a push your luck style game in which you're going to be having cards in your hand, moving across the board, rolling dice and trying to play the cards that correctly match the die. Of course you don't have to, you can choose to bluff and players are going to choose to either accept or reject the fact that you're bluffing, you're not, they're not going to really know so they have to guess. If they successfully guess your bluff they'll move forward instead of you and you'll go back and vice versa and of course whoever makes it to the end by actually playing the successful combination at the very end for the last card is going to win the game. Let me go ahead and show you what the game looks like and how it is played. So here we have the game Knights of Glory in all of its glory, its prototypey glory. And of course, let's talk about all the components. The first thing you'll get is die. These die are going to be multi-sided along with a blank side. These will be you'll be, you'll be using to push your luck, similar to the game Celestia. You'll have your player tokens or player pawns. They're all going to start in the start space. Your hand of five cards, as well as your two voting cards, which is a check and an X for good or bad. Or a player start token. Of course, these little cogs here, which are going to help you progress throughout the game. It's going to be a way of instant. Instead of using cards from your hand, you can play these as wilds. And then you're going to have the deck of cards that you'll be using to replenish your hand. And each of these separate decks, the first tier, the second, and the third. Uh, this is all set up as well. As you can see, the cell and the start location is going to go here. Normally, it's going to go all the way across, one, one, two, two, three, three. But because we have a smaller location, I just kind of had just condensed it. So the players are going to go this way, just like that, snaking around to get to the exit. You're also going to get a rule book and an actual box for the game. This is just a little uh, cardboard box that shows the cover, so don't worry about that too much. But this is mainly going to be getting for the game Knights of Glory. All right, let me tell you what you get in your hand and how it works in a single turn, and then we'll show you a full walkthrough. So in the game Knights of Glory, it's pretty simple. You're going to get a player pawn. You're going to get a starting hand of five cards. These cards are going to, are, are going to be basically be different weapons, and it's going to relate to the sides of the die, whether it be a shield, a key, um, a, a, a torch, or a sword. And uh, uh, you can also get some other stuff, like this wild here, which is basically anything, and a jester, which is nothing, but if you can get it through as a bluff, you're going to get a bunch of, uh, you're, gonna get, you're gonna get to use a cog, and cogs are considered wild. They'll also help you progress through the game, so they're very nice. They can also stop you from having to go backwards, and you're gonna get these two cards here, a yay and a nay. These are cards you use on not your turn. As players try to progress, you'll decide if they actually have the cards in their hand or not, and play these cards face down, revealing them. To start the game off, it's pretty simple. You start the start space, and then you're going to get, get to go. You're going to go and move to the first space, reveal it, see what it is, roll the dice based on the dice on the card. Uh, it's, sometimes you might actually be able to substitute the die for a separate symbol on the die based on what the card says. And then if you progress, if you, if you press past that, meaning you successfully played the right two cards face down or successfully bluffed your way through, you get to go to the next card, rinsing and repeating until you either decide to stop or get called on a bluff. If you stop, you're just going to keep whatever cards you have left and wait until the end of the round. Everybody's going to do the same thing. And at the end of the round, everybody's going to get to draw back up to five cards and continue the play. Now, of course, whoever gets to the very end of the game is going to be the winner, and you always have to have the exact cards needed, or cogs in this case, if you have two cogs and two cards that are exactly the, the, what you need, and there's four, of course, the different dice symbols on that last card, then everybody else will still have a chance to win, which means that every time somebody progresses on the board after the first person has gotten to the end, a, por a tile on the board is going to be removed from the very back end. So the tile, basically, it's going to be collapsing on everybody else. Everybody that gets hit in the rubble is done for and everybody that actually makes it out after that is the winner of the game knights of glory let's show you a little bit of a playthrough how it works the turn runs as well as maybe the ending and some other bonus stuff um and then we'll go ahead and tell you what i think about it Back to the board we go, and as you can see, we're ready to begin. Everybody's got their cards, got their little yay or nays. We have this starting pawn here, which basically signifies the first player. And after every round, players are going to just basically be getting this, meaning the first player will be the last player. And to start with, we've got red. So red's going to be going in front. We'll have a yellow next, purple, and then blue. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at red's hand. We'll leave that pawn there. So we have a torch, a sword, a wild, a bomb, and a shield. These are all hidden. We won't need these because these are for everybody else. And we're going to go ahead and 
and move. Now you can go ahead and move as a free action, moving to the space here. This is not a death trap. If it was, if it was not a death trap, this would be not here, but it is, which means we're going to roll one die based on this little symbol over here, a die symbol, and we're going to see what happens. Come on, blank. Okay, we got a blue here. So that means we need a shield to progress, or we can substitute one die for this symbol instead. So it can be a shield or a torch. Then we're going to look through our hand and go, okay, what do we want to play down? We can play down anything we want, remember, but uh, if somebody calls us out on it, we don't actually have that thing, we're going to be in trouble. So I think we're going to go ahead and just play that shield. I think that's a safe bet. And then everybody else, after we place this down, is going to vote. They're going to look at their cards and they're going to say, okay, did he do it or did he not? And uh, so he'll place that one there. Uh, these guys will place maybe this one there. And then uh, this one right here. Okay, so after they voted, they're going to go ahead and reveal and see what happens. So these guys all voted. Two said I would pass. One said I wouldn't. And of course, make sure you keep your voting cards correct with everybody else so you know what you're actually, you know who's actually voting with who. Uh, I played my shield, so that means I was successful and I get to advance through the next round. This card will get discarded. And the person, which was purple, who voted for me to fail is actually going to have to go backwards. Now, this is interesting. Whenever you fail at the start of the round, there's a couple options you have. The first one is you can make a plea bargain, which means that you can go ahead and discard two cards from your hand if you want, so that way you don't have to actually go to the jail cell. Otherwise, you're going to have to move back. And then on, or sorry, move back. And then on your turn, if you would like, you can either A, reveal a key face down, or hide a key face down like I just did here, and people will vote on it. If I have the key, I discard and get to move up to the start space. B, I could go ahead and reveal two cards or discard two cards, and C, I could pass my turn. The last thing I could do is get rid of a cog to get out of jail. So those are options. Oh, and a while. Uh, so those are options as how to get out of jail, and then you get to go back to here. So you want to be careful about uh, voting uh, no in this space right here, but it could be important. Maybe the somebody's about to win and you're on the start space. What do you have, have to lose, right? Okay, so we're going to be moving on to the next space, and it's going to be this tier one. And we'll be doing this like jagged snake-like thing here. Normally, like I said, the board is going to be actually be elongated horizontally. Uh, so here we go. Now we have another basic trap. It's a singular die. We're going to roll that die. Okay, red or a bomb. What do we want to do here? Let's go ahead and place this one face down. People will once again vote yay or nay. Most people will probably say, okay, that's good. I'll, I'll show the bomb off. That means I get to go ahead and advance one more time. And then I can go ahead and flip over this next one here. Okay, that one says I never, I'm going to roll two die. Let's see what I get here. All right. All right. Okay, so I got, what's interesting is I've got a yellow and I've got uh, the option to turn yellow into red, and this one is actually irrelevant because it is a blank. Well, I've got that red and I've got a wild, so I'm going to go ahead and use that torch. We're going to go ahead and uh, have everybody vote once again, and uh, I'm going to use that torch. And of course, after that, I can choose to stop, which is probably a good idea because I've only got two cards in my hand. If I choose to go through this, it's very likely that I'm probably not going to succeed here, so I'm just going to not continue anymore. At that point, my hand is going to stay with me. I'm just going to sit like that, and the next player is going to get to go, and they're going to actually get to go through the revealed tiles here, continuing the game along the path. Now, what's also important to note is, of course, after you get to the very end here to fight this last boss, you have to have the exact pieces required, except for the fact that there are certain cards in the deck or certain tiles that might actually give you the ability to get cogs, such as, such as for instance, this right here. This is a tier three. You can roll one die, two, or three. If you choose to roll any of these blue ones here, for each one you successfully accomplish, you get actually one of these blue cogs. And cogs are useful because they basically count as wilds. They're something that you can actually replace uh, die tokens with and then have to only roll whatever, whatever is left over. So that's important to note as well. There's also some traps. And like, for instance, this one is a trap, which means it doesn't have these symbols here. So whenever you roll dice, so if you actually rolled all three of these here. Oh, that's a beautiful roll, but let's say we didn't get that. So we got this. We wouldn't have the ability to replace something with a different symbol, so it can be a little more challenging with these death traps here, right? And after that, everybody, after everybody's gone around one time, you're going to then replenish hands. You're going to use the rest of this deck here, whatever is left, and refill each player's hand in turn order, and then you're going to shuffle whatever is left over if there's no deck left, especially in a bigger player game. Shuffle, shuffle together the discard pile, and of course deal out to the rest of the players. And uh, after that, then you're going to actually take this pawn here, whatever player it was, and you're going to move it to the next player um, so they get, so they'd be yellow, I guess, so they'd get to go and have their turn. And continuing like that. If somebody makes it to here, and let's say the game had been progressed, obviously, so we flip over these guys here. That's actually a death trap, but you can actually get a cog that way. That's nice. That one's very difficult, but it's not a death trap. And then there's another
other one right there. So these are the ways you can get the cog. So let's say it was more like, let's say it was more like this, right? Well, this guy is done. He's won the game, but everybody else still has a chance to go. The interesting thing though, is if it was yellow's turn and he moved over here successfully, uh, if every time somebody moves up, one of these cards is going to get discarded. So eventually as players continually move up, these cards will be removed until the point where the game is going to end. And if, if anybody gets swallowed up by the collapsing, uh, the collapsing Coliseum, they are out of the game. And everybody who's left here is the winner. I guess the first person to make and consider himself the biggest winner, which is really nice. All right, so let me show you a couple of the cards too, which is interesting. I didn't talk about it fully. The jester is another way to get cogs. When you are vote, when you are putting cards face down and pretending like you have them, uh, bluffing basically, you can use a jester. And jesters are basically nothing. However, they count as a card, so you think they think that it's actually a card you're using that's going to be beneficial to you. And if you do bluff correctly, you're going to get a cog for successfully pulling off a jester. You're also going to have a wild wild cards too and wild cards are very useful in the game let's see if i got any in these hands here where are they here you go wild cards they basically consist of any they count as anything so they can be used for any reason whatsoever uh, which is very nice also to note um when you're also just always remember that it's very important to get to this space you actually have to uh uh, get fully exactly what you need. But if somebody tr says that you're not, uh, you didn't make it to there and they would have to go back, you can always use a cog to uh, stop that from happening. Nevertheless, so that's the basic idea of the game Knights of Glory, a simple uh, uh, bluffing style game, trying to get to the end of the board, along with this, of course, uh, bidding. It works similar to Celestia. Let's talk about it a little more above as far as what I think about it and um, what's going to be included. All right, so Knights of Glory, what do I think about this game? Well, first of all, in Knights of Glory, it reminds me of the game Celestia in a lot of ways. Celestia is a game where you're traveling on an air balloon and players are playing cards in turn order to get across the spaces and you can choose to stay on the balloon or get off the balloon and if you get off the balloon you'll get whatever points but if you stay on and you crash you all lose points. And this one is a more com more competitive version of that game in which it's one player trying to get across the board before any of the other players and the other players want to stop them or to make sure that they don't get to bluff their way through success because bluffing is going to entitle you to a bunch of these uh, little cog tokens it's also going to let you advance through the game it's nasty to allow players to uh to bluff <laughs> bluff you you have to be careful but you also have to be careful if they're telling the truth because you're going to end up going backwards and you don't want to end up in prison you have to start revealing cards you have to start discarding cards or a key or a while you don't want to do that because you're only limited to a certain amount of cards in your hand i love these kind of games i i love um the, uh, t the temple style game. I can't remember all of them, but it, it basically Celestia is what it really reminds me of. Um, and they're, they're super fun because you're really, really, really nervous when you're bluffing and you like have to hold a straight face. It has that perfect poker aspect to it. It is, of course, more competitive than Celestia. So you like if you like the cooperative nature that has that is involved with Celestia, this is probably going to be a less of yours. But if you want a little bit more of a combative game, a little bit more competitive, uh, then you're going to want to jump on this one here because it has that aspect to it. The theme works very well. I really like the uh, type of cards they're using, too, as far as getting through the dungeons. It reminds me of going through a dungeon. It kind of reminds me of the style of like oh mon the the, the uh, oh, what's it called boss monster in which you're going through the different dungeon tiles it's just your one adventurer going through it though and trying to avoid it and the game is trying to stop you from getting there the collapsing tile mechanism is nice too i like the fact that more than one player can win which is a nice little uh, switch to a lot of games that are like this you can still get to the end but you're also sacrificing your uh, your opponents along the way if you make it of course your opponents can say oh, well i'm not going to make it for sure but i'm definitely not going to let you do that so i'm going to try and progress my way through i like the little aspect of it too it's fun it's competitive it has that secretive hand nature and it has the ability to use these cogs which is also exceptionally fun uh, because you can use it to achieve victory and sometimes you want to save them overall though it's a good game i enjoy it i give it my stamp of approval because i love these type of games all right guys thanks for watching another unfiltered gamer kickstarter board game review if you like this video go ahead and check out some of my videos here on youtube like subscribe and comment as well as checking out knights of glory if you like these kind of bluffing style games i think you're gonna dig this one especially competitive aspects this is one i could celestia or this one could be uh, either one i'd be enjoy but enjoy playing i'm totally up for either one uh but remember though there is more com there is more of a, a mean nature in this game as opposed to that one that one's a little more floofy nevertheless though you can also check out our website unfilteredgame.com we've got tons of blog posts giveaways kickstarter lists and more i believe we're also giving away a copy of knights of glory on the 23rd so if you're interested right when the campaign starts we'll be going ahead and giving this away and you can try and win one for yourself for free also you can go ahead and check out our friends everythingboardgames.com and the giveaway geek two great sites that also do board game giveaways all right guys that's all i got for you this time and as always 
Uh, I should say that you should not go through a dungeon unless you're fully prepared to uh, suffer the consequences. I, I don't know. Whatever. See you later.